Hello students, I am Seema, your English teacher and today we shall do yet another interesting topic in grammar, modal auxiliaries. An auxiliary verb as you all know is a helping verb. Then what is modal auxiliaries? Modal auxiliaries are the verbs which help to modify the mood of the verb. Mood of the verb. Let's understand this. Students, when we say that a person paints a picture, then we are talking about a regular activity of painting. But if I say that he can paint a picture, it shows ability. And if I say he should paint, then I am suggesting that he should paint. So, the modal auxiliaries are verbs which express different moods of the main verb. Now, let us go on to understanding modal auxiliaries further. Nazia plays tennis. Let's take a look at this sentence and some more. RK acts in movies. Rahul completes his homework. Nigel goes to church. Now, look at these verbs. Plays, acts, completes and goes. In each of these sentences, there is only one verb and this one verb is the main verb. But if you look at these sentences, Nazia is playing tennis, RK can act well, Rahul must complete his homework, Nigel should go to church on Sunday. Here the verbs are is playing, can act, must complete, should go. Everywhere we have two verbs. And the first verb is always the helping verb or the auxiliary verb. And the second verb is the main verb. So the auxiliary is always before the main verb. The second verb is the main verb. So students, we know the placement of an auxiliary always before the main verb. That means when you see two verbs in a sentence, then the first one is an auxiliary verb. Now these auxiliaries are further of two types, the primary auxiliary and the modal auxiliary. Let's understand the difference. A primary auxiliary student, let's see the sentence, Salman is playing the match. Now in this case again two verbs is playing, we know that the first verb is an auxiliary verb. So here is is an auxiliary. It is used as an auxiliary. So it can be used as an auxiliary. Now if you take the same verb in this sentence Salman is the hero of the match. In this case is is the main verb. That means the same verb is can be used as an auxiliary can be used as a main verb. It can do both the functions. It can stand alone in a sentence as well as it can support another verb as a helping verb. And let's take a look at modal auxiliaries. Now in this case Salman can paint very well. Once again can paint. Okay. Look at the first verb can. We know that it is an auxiliary verb. So here can is used as an auxiliary verb. But let us take another sentence. Salman can very well. Does this sentence make sense? No. So here can cannot be used as the main verb. So what is a modal auxiliary students? Simple. It can only come with another verb. It can never stand alone. It can never be used as the main verb. It can only be used as a helping verb. Now. Let's look at some of the examples of primary auxiliaries and the meaning. We said that primary auxiliaries can be used as the main verb, the only verb in the sentence and primary auxiliaries can be used as also auxiliary verbs. But another important thing, they change according to the subject. The primary auxiliaries change according to the subject. What do we mean by that? For example, if I say Salman is playing. But if I say Salman and Sachin, then I will say are playing. So the is changes to are. So they change according to the subject. Now, what are the examples of primary auxiliaries? To be form, that is 
is, am, are, was, were. These are the to be forms. To do, that is do, does, did. To have, have, has, had. Students, the functions of to be, to do, to have are actually different from expressing a mood. A to be form is used in order to create a continuous tense. Is writing, are playing or even a passive voice. He was killed. So, we use the to be form in two cases. One as an auxiliary, one in order to create tenses and the second one in order to create the passive voice. A to do form is used in order to show emphasis or a negation or a question. Whereas a to have form is again as an auxiliary used sh to show tenses that is the perfect tense and the perfect continuous tense. So this was primary auxiliaries, the three examples to be, to do, to have and what uses they have I just told you and now we go on to the actual topic that is the modal auxiliaries. Once again we know that modal auxiliaries can only be used as auxiliaries. They cannot be used as the main verb. They do not change according to the subject. Again, Salman can paint very well. But if I say Salman and Sachin, do we change the can to something else? No. So Salman and Sachin can paint. So here the can does not change. What are the examples of modal auxiliaries? Here, can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might, must, ought to, used to, need, dare, again need not, dare not or also in the form of a question. So need and dare are actually used as auxiliaries or modal auxiliaries only in the negative and the interrogative forms. We have already seen the meaning of modal auxiliaries and the examples of modal auxiliaries can, could, will, would, may, might, shall, should, need to, need not, dare not, ought to, used to, must. Now we shall go on to the function of modal auxiliaries, the different functions of different modal auxiliaries. Students, we could get questions in the examinations whereby we have to fill in the blanks with the correct or the suitable modal auxiliary which means the one that will express the meaning given in the bracket. So accordingly we need to learn the different functions of each and every modal auxiliary. Let's start by learning just one function of every modal auxiliary taking one statement I dash cook food. Let's use different modal auxiliaries and see how the meaning changes. If I say I can cook food then can here expresses ability. But at the same time if I say I could cook food it expresses past ability. Meaning, I could cook food, that means now I cannot, earlier I could. So it shows past ability. If I say I may cook food, then definitely it is not ability. It shows that it is a possibility. It may be possible for me to do it. So may is used as possibility. If I am not too sure, then I will use might. I might cook food would become a remote possibility, a far away possibility. Similarly, if I say I will cook food. Now, students, we know that in order to create a future tense, a simple future, we use a shall with I. If I say I shall cook food, it's just talking about a future tense. But if I use a will with I, then it shows determination. But if I say I would cook food, that means at a particular time in the past, I would continuously do this action. So it is past habitual action. Further, if I say I shall cook food, then here it is simply a future tense. If I say I should cook food, then it means advice or suggestion. 
But if I say I must cook food, then it shows compulsion. So it's a stronger one here. It is compulsion. If I say I ought to cook food, that means here ought to means it is obligation. Something I need to do, something I should do, something which is morally correct. If I say I need not cook food, that means there is no need to do it. So it is absence of necessity. And if I say I dare not cook food, that means I will not have the courage to do so. So it is absence of courage. Students, what have you seen? The same statement, the same verb cook. But when we add these modal auxiliaries one by one, the meaning changes. This is exactly what we need to learn in modal auxiliaries. The meanings, the moods expressed by each and every modal auxiliary. Here we saw just one sentence and one function of every modal auxiliary. Now we will move on to see the different functions of each and every modal auxiliary because one modal auxiliary could have more than a single function. So let's start with the first one. Let's take the modal auxiliary can. Now look at this sentence. I can swim. Simple. It is ability. We've done that before. But if I say can I borrow your car for a day? It doesn't talk about the ability here. It is clearly permission. Now we move on to the next one, could. Could you help me to carry this box? Does it say past ability? Remember students we saw, I could cook food was past ability there. But here if I say, could you help me to carry this box? It is a polite request. We could go to the Essel world for a picnic. Now here it is a suggestion that we could go here. Next, I could drive a car when I was in college. We've done this. It shows past ability. Now, I cannot, but I could when I was in college. Could I speak to the officer for a minute? Here, it is a permission because you want to speak to someone who, with whom you cannot speak without permission. So here, it is permission. Students, can you see for can, we had two functions, permission, as well as ability. But if you look at could, there are so many functions, polite request, suggestion, past ability, permission. So just the word could will not be able to tell you the function. You have to read the whole sentence and understand what exactly is the meaning of the word over there or the function of the auxiliary. So you have to be able to identify the function of the auxiliary by reading the sentence and understanding it. But you must know that these are the possible functions for this auxiliary. So there's a learning here students. You have to learn the list of the modal auxiliaries as well as the functions of different modal auxiliaries. So next one here, during the monsoon, the sea could be a dangerous place. So one more, see we have another one, possibility. So here, could stands for possibility. Now let's go on to May. We may have a holiday tomorrow. As we've seen earlier, it shows possibility. May I leave early today? Surely, students, this is not possibility. This is permission. May God bless you. Here, you are blessing someone. You're wishing something good for someone. It could be a wish or it could be a blessing or it could also be a curse. Suppose somebody says, may you fall down when you go out on the road today. It's a curse. May I help you lay the table? Surely, this is offering help. So see students, may also has so many different functions. Might. Now here, he said that he might go for the seminar. Now in this case students, he said that clearly indicates it is reported speech. It is indirect speech. That means, if you remember your rules of direct and indirect, we have learned there that the modal auxiliaries will change when you change from direct to indirect. So surely here the might is changed from me. So it has been changed from me. He said that he might go. The original sentence would be he said, comma, then open inverted commas and it would be 
I may go for the seminar. The same thing when you change it into indirect speech, it becomes he said that he might go for the seminar. So it is the past tense of may. But if you say here it is indirect speech, I might go to London next week, surely this is a remote possibility. Something that is a little far away, you are not very sure of. Next one, will. Here too, quite a lot of functions. He will go to the market tomorrow. Simple future tense. We are talking here only about the future. But if I say, will you help me with my homework? Then it is a polite request. Students, we've already seen polite requests even with could. I will not listen to what he says. Now here, this shows determination. Students, I told you that normally for a future tense with I and we, we use shall. But here, we are using will. So surely it shows something else besides just a simple future tense. So it is determination or willingness. Next, we have would. He would go to the gym every evening, which is something that he used to do in the past. So here, we have a past habitual action. Would you lend me something? Now here you are making a request. One more for polite request. So could, would and will. Three auxiliaries, one function, polite request. So just like an auxiliary could have many functions, many functions could, one function could be expressed by many auxiliaries. Otto would probably shake my hand. Students, here it is possibility. She told him that she would like to become his letter daughter. Now in this case, the would is nothing but a past tense of will because it is an indirect speech and I have already explained to you that when we change from direct to indirect, we change also the modal auxiliary. Now next one, shall. They shall be punished for their wrongdoing. Students, once again, if you remember I said shall is used with the first person, I and we, in order to express the future. But in this case, we are using it with the third person. So here it has a different function that is a threat. You shall not go to the gym every evening. Prohibition, stopping someone from doing something. Shall we go for a picnic this weekend? Now this is a suggestion. So shall students has three functions here. Threat, prohibition, suggestion. Once again, one word, one auxiliary, three functions. So we need to learn, we need to know the different functions of each and every auxiliary. Should, you should help the poor. Now in this case students, suppose we don't help the poor. It's not that we would be punished by someone, it's just our moral responsibility, something that we should feel we must do. So it is called as an obligation or a moral obligation. And here you should help the poor, therefore the word should or this moral auxiliary should expresses obligation. But if you look at the same word in this sentence, you should practice regularly, surely this is suggestion. It is not obligation. Next one, must. We must respect all religions. Those students, this does sound a little stronger. In this case also it is still obligation because respecting religion or respecting someone is not legally binding on us. Okay, so here it is an obligation. Something that we know, we feel we should do. She must have forgotten the keys. Now in this case, Students, here it is as if you are guessing something. This must have happened. So it is a conjecture or a guess. You must reach the office in time. Now students, here this is not an obligation. This is compulsion. So whenever you have to use a modal auxiliary, always for compulsion you should stick to must. But for obligation, you can use should or you can use the other one that we are going to do a little later or to. But when it comes to guess or compulsion, surely it's only must. Ought to. We ought to look after our old parents. Again, something that we should do. We ought to do. We must do, but it is obligation. It is not a compulsion. 
they ought to win the game today now here students it is not a moral obligation or an obligation it is based on certain things that have happened certain situations you can state something for example there's a match going on and you know that the opposite team the opponents are not very strong the pitch the weather is very suitable for the home team and the batsmen are strong the team is strong then keeping in mind these conditions you say that they ought to win the game today that means it is probability there is a probability it is probable that this will happen based on certain situations and conditions next one let's take used to they used to play cricket every evening used to something that they did in the past do you remember there was one more we did that is would so here also students used to means past habitual action there used to be a hotel at the corner of the street there used to be now it is not so it is the existence of something in the past so used to again has two functions students past habitual action and the existence of something in the past need which shows necessity or absence of necessity students we've already done earlier need is only used as a modal auxiliary when we are going to ask a question or when we say something negative so here he need not pay the money this is a negative statement he need not pay the money right away in this case it shows again the absence of necessity negation need he pay the money right away it is interrogation or a question so need can be used as a modal auxiliary in two cases a negation or a question and then we have dare which means challenge or courage how dare you touch my bag how did you have the courage to touch my bag and here if you say you dare not contradict me that means i challenge you to contradict me students can you see here that in both the cases one is a negation the other one is a question okay so again dare is used as a modal auxiliary only when it is an interrogative sentence or a negative sentence students we've seen the functions the different functions of all the different auxiliaries let's move on to the exercise now here fill in the blanks with the correct modal auxiliaries you dash be punctual now what do we want to show here they will give you the instruction you have to write the modal auxiliary which shows obligation students do you remember there were three we had should we had ought to we also had must but i also told you that avoid the must when it comes to obligation you can use must only for compulsion and guess keep obligation as either should or ought to the next one dash you please help me with this now this looks like a request because you want help so you are asking for help therefore it is a polite request that you have to actually express you have to use a modal auxiliary expressing request remember students we had three options could would will all three would be correct could you please help me with this would you please help me with this and will you please help me with this all three are correct i think he dash come next week now here they are asking you to write an auxiliary which shows remote possibility and we know there's only one for that that is might we have he dash pass the examination easily probability based on certain conditions and situations we know that it is ought to he ought to pass the examination easily he dash watch a movie every saturday before he got married now we're talking about a past habitual action two options students by now i'm sure you've learned that we have two options for a past habitual action that is used to and would one more exercise identify the modal auxiliary and write what it denotes we used to breathe well because we worked hard now we know that used to is the modal auxiliary and the answer is past habitual action something that we did in the past 
continuously. You should try plastic surgery. We know that the modal auxiliary is should. Now you're telling somebody to try something, so it is nothing but advice or suggestion. You may go. Now here you are actually giving permission for a person to leave. So here may becomes permission. We must master the art of breathing. Now here the modal auxiliary is must and remember I said students must either compulsion or conjecture or guess. You are not guessing anything. We are making something compulsory. So must becomes compulsion. They would watch a movie every Saturday. Would. Here past habitual action.